Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. It is a lovely spring day here in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's April. The flowers are blooming. The grass is growing. We're mowing grass. We're looking at all kinds of fun stuff out there that's just blooming, and it's just an awesome day, and I'm excited to share with you guys today on how to sell your house. It's springtime and it's time to list your house. And so we are listing more houses right now than typically ever. I think everybody gets their house ready over the winter. They're like, hey, it's time to sell this puppy. We want to move. We don't want to do it during school because we got to deal with kids. We got to deal with dogs. We got to deal with all kinds of stuff. And who wants to move in the winter because it's freezing? And so we're listing houses so we can move this summer and i've got our behind the scenes master of podcast mitch mcgarry coming on he's gonna talk to you guys about selling his house and so we're gonna interview him on how to sell a house welcome to the podcast mitch come on down come on down why don't you pull up a seat in your studio in your studio and your studio calling we're just Dude, We're this is it. all your studio. I'm just a guest. I'm a, like a permanent guest at your in your studio all you the are. time. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, welcome every to the Tuesday. other side of the podcast. Every Tuesday. That's Thank right. you. All right, Mitch. So we're talking about. I'm going to try and invo- inform the listeners today on selling your house. So, mm-hmm. have you sold a house before in your life? No. No. I have not. So this will be good. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's pretend you and Marissa want to leave your beautiful house with your awesome chicken coop you just made, and you want to move to Johnson City. Yep. Okay, so the chicken what, coop we might need to sell that separately as its own. Is its own, as its own house? It, well, yeah, it is its own house for chickens. It's a one bedroom, one bathroom. <laughs> it's got a kitchen. <laughs> I don't know how many how many chickens live in there. So it's I mean it could be a six bedroom or something, but I don't know. Um, of course, that may like put you into a weird area. For the record, disclosing how many chickens you have on your property. <laughs> for the record, there's four chickens. Four chickens only. Off four. the record, there's nine chickens. Off the record, nine. Nobody, yep. nobody heard the nine chicken story. Okay. Nobody knows where it's at either. So, so what? Let's just let's yep. just throw it out there. Like, what do you think step one in moving to Johnson City would be? Into to moving to Johnson City. You got to sell your house and you got to buy a house in Johnson City. How are we going to do it? Contact a realtor. Oh, good good answer. Good answer. Most people is that is that the right answer? Most people say let's just go to Johnson City and buy a house. <laughs> right. But we have a we have a hurdle to overcome first. We need yes. to sell your house. Um, now we could go ahead and you could um, get a bridge loan uh-huh. where you have two loans at that point. You have a loan on your current house and a loan on your new house, which makes life a whole lot easier mm-hmm. because. You can take all of your stuff. We can go ahead and find your house in Johnson City, buy it, close on it. You move all your stuff to Johnson City, mm-hmm. and then we sell your house in Elizabethan. So it makes life a little less stressful. If you can do that, I'd say it's a great great thing to do. Or mm-hmm. if you own your house outright, and maybe you want to downsize, you want to buy a smaller house, you could do a home equity line of credit, a HELOC. Right. You could go ahead and take out, say, 300 against your house and buy the house here in Johnson City, use that 300,000 for that. And then we turn around, sell your house in Elizabeth and pay off the heat lock. And so right. you're again, debt free. And you probably have some cash in your pocket after that deal. Because is that dependent on how much you still owe on your current it house? Is. Yep. So they look at the total price or total value of your house and then they'll loan you about 80% of that. In okay. Because right. the bank wants a little skin in the game still. Yes. So, once we decide, hey, you're going to sell your house first, then, yes, you contact mm-hmm. me. Thank you, Mitch, for calling me. This you're welcome. Week. And then so I come out, and so I'm going to come out and look at your house. Hey, Mitch, good to good to meet you in person if we didn't already know each other. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a look at your house. You're going to show me all the wonderful things you've done to improve the house. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at your house. I'm going to look at the neighborhood, um, you know, and then we're going to sit down and talk. And so you – Probably have been doing a little research online, maybe, and think your house is. Let's just throw out a number. What do you think your house is worth? I'd say about two fifty. Okay, and twenty five. So, you know, two two fifty, two twenty five. So Zillow may have told you that, right? Mm-hmm. Or you've gone on some website and it says, "Hey, your house is worth three fifty. 
Um, Zillow says it's worth four eighty five or something. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know that you have nine unofficial chickens in your backyard, right? Which may or may not help the value. Uh, <laughs> they don't know that you had a basement that you finished out, right? You know, and or they don't know that you know what you haven't done a thing to your house in the last ten years, and mm-hmm. it looks like it's abandoned. Yes. And so you still think it's... They're just seeing it as it is. They're looking at raw data. Yeah. They don't have anything else but raw data. So they're just looking at the neighborhood, looking around. And I do that too. I look at the neighborhood. Yeah. But I go at a little different route. I go in a deep dive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to look at your house. I'm going to say, oh, actually, you've got three bedrooms instead of two. Mm -hmm. Um, This room would count, even though it doesn't have a closet. It still counts. It's got a window that you can get out of, or actually a a fireman can get you out of. Mm -hmm. And then... um, you don't even have to have a closet. You can have an armoire. And then so, and then you guys upgraded your kitchen, and mm-hmm. that's awesome add value. And yeah, did you fix up your bathrooms too? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, did. Of course. Of course, because you are a great <laughs> homeowner. You've painted it. It looks like a Norman Rockwell house sitting on the corner in <laughs> downtown Elizabeth, and it just looks awesome. And so your house is going to get a good value. So I take all these things into consideration. And I take it very heavily. Like people go, Tell me what my house is worth when I'm sitting down with it. I'm like, I really can't. Like, I need right. to go back and do some research because I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. And so I, and I'm not like a, you know, a oracle or anything. I'm not going to give you down to the penny what you're going to get, but I can get pretty close. Mm-hmm. And then with the market, we can even stretch a little bit sometimes, knowing that in this area, there's nothing for sale currently. Um, there's nothing like this on the market. So let's stretch it a little bit. Let's see mm-hmm. if we can, you know, and, and it depends on your goals. You know, I'm going to ask you guys, why are you moving to Johnson city? What's important to you about that? And yeah. You're like, well, we really need to be over there in, you know, a month because Marissa starts a new job there. Mm-hmm. You know, she's been walking to work every day and from Elizabeth and it's really far <laughs> and she just doesn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> 12 miles. 12 miles both ways uphill in the (laughs) snow. And so she doesn't want to do that anymore. And so, you know, you're a good loving husband. You you want to make sure she can just walk out her front door and go right to work. Right. um, And so you may have a little more urgency um, to get to Johnson City. Now, some people are like, well, you know, if we move this summer, it's great. If we move in the fall, that's fine, too. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have a super urgency. So that I factor that in, too. And we talk about that in pricing your house. And so... Um, we'll look, sit down. And so I'll say, Hey Mitch, you know what? These three houses are on the market. Um, and you'll go, yeah, I've seen those signs when I drove around. And then these three houses are under contract and you're like, Oh yeah, I've saw, I've seen those around there too. Right. And I look for, usually did five, but right now it's so busy that you can't get five. You can get five solds. So these five sold houses around you have sold for this much. They're similar to yours. They look like yours. They feel like yours. Obviously they're not as good as yours because your, your house is obviously awesome. Um, and so I, we kind of come out with price per square foot is the way I like to work it. And then kind of those, we factor in those other variables mm-hmm. like, okay, well, all these price per square foot houses that sold around you had old kitchens that were nasty and didn't have new bathrooms and you've upgraded. So I would think you would, your price per square foot would be higher. Mm-hmm. And so we sit down and we come up and I go, Hey, I think we could probably list your house for three ninety nine. And you're like, Whoa, that's awesome. You yeah. Know? Or you said two fifty, So probably like two seventy five. Mm-hmm. You know, and let's see what happens because you don't have to sell it. Now, if you're like, hey, I want to be in Johnson City in the next month or so, then let's price it at, you know, and you're like, I need to sell it like tomorrow. And I'd say, well, let's be aggressive. Let's price it at, you know, 249 mm-hmm. And even in that, with this market right now, you may even get the 275 because there's not a lot of homes for sale. Yeah. 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 Offers. And, yep. And we could have an open house that first weekend. We could... We have um, people help stage it. And so we can go back to that part of it too. Right. Let's say your house isn't in the best condition in the world. Mm -hmm. And this is where I love helping people. I love connecting them with um, painters and maybe guys who need to do carpet. And if you wanted to do some bigger stuff, we've got guys that can, you know, reside houses and Mm -hmm. um, put on new gutters and put new windows. You know, we've got a a litany of um, contacts for people to help them get their house ready to go. Right. And um, so that's something I feel good about too. Like going, well, let's spend money on painting because that's cheap. Yep. This room would paint, we could paint it a certain color, brighten it up, really make the room pop. And then, that's not going to cost you a whole lot. Do you like to paint, Mitch? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah. Well, if you like I'll do it myself, it, that's great. I'm looking yeah. at some walls that you have painted and you were an excellent painter. And so cheers. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, you could paint it yourself or we could hook you up with somebody who could paint it. Right. Um, but that's an easy value, bad, bad, uh, <laughs> value <laughs> add. And so, uh, you know, some other things too, like LVP now, luxury vinyl plank. Yep. Maybe your floors aren't great. But that's not expensive, you know. Is that what this stuff is? That is what we're looking at in your okay. studio here. And so you could say, okay, uh, I'd say in this room, it's probably worth the thousand dollars to put new flooring in, and it's gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna get a return on that. Right. Um, so having done it for a long time, I can kind of help guide people and say these are the things that we want, you know, that could add value. Mm -hmm. Now I'm never gonna push you to do it, yep. but the market tells you what your house is worth ultimately. Yep. You and I can sit and think about it and work the numbers and pray about it and say, okay, well, we feel like this is where it's worth. And ultimately it's only worth what somebody's going to pay for it. And yeah. so the market dictates that. And so right. sometimes I, and I don't mind being wrong and you making more money. I don't like being wrong and you making less money. And so I, um, that kind of gives me a little heartburn. I want to make sure that I get as much money as I can for you yeah. and Marissa. So you can take that to Johnson city. That's good to know that there's you know a lot of those little things that you can do to kind of almost immediately improve the value of your house. A lot of times. Maybe a week of work. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. And a lot of times it's just doing a, like a deep spring cleaning. Yeah. would make it look great. You're like, oh, well, I need to repaint these baseboards. Well, maybe not. Just wipe them off. Let's get them, get down there, a little, yeah. little sweat equity in there, scrub them up real good, clean them up, wipe them down. Mm -hmm. They look brand new. You know? Yeah. Now, sometimes they do need to be painted and yes. so just little stuff like that i think um people want to know that they're buying a home that's been well taken care of mm -hmm. and so you know when they walk in or when they even get to the front door um you know it's a first impression kind of deal so mm -hmm. curb appeal huge make sure your yard's tight you know weedy mow put out some flowers let's mulch it's time to mulch it's time to get it looking good let's um paint the front steps you know make that Looking good. Let's put some flowers by the front door. Yellow flowers are very welcoming color. People go, oh, that's pretty. That's, that's attractive. I want to go to that front door. Does mm -hmm. the front door squeak? Right. Uh, do the boards <laughs> look like they're falling apart? You know, does the front porch got um, bird poop all over it? You know, just little stuff that people go, huh. Because everybody, when they're looking at the house, they're like, can I live here? Uh -huh. you know, every time, can I live here? Is this somewhere that speaks to me? Is this my house? Is this you my picture house? yourself and yeah, each room, sure. basically, yeah. Yeah, and it's fun because I love watching these people um, walk through the house, and almost immediately you know whether they like it or not. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, okay, I get it. Let's move on, and let's go look at another <laughs> one because this isn't your house, you know. But I see the Body light. language. Yeah. Yes, buyer language. Exactly, yeah. Mitch. Um so when you remember Rissa looking in Johnson City, you'll, I'll be watching you all. Mm -hmm. um, but other times, too, it's like, oh, this is their house. Like their eyes light up, their yep. spirit lights up, the husband and wife are looking at each other, and they're like, oh, baby, this is our house. You mm -hmm. know, and, um, and they can see themselves there, which is cool, too. So I love, love helping people with that dream. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's fun. Um, it can be difficult. Yeah. When you guys bought your house, did you look at a lot of houses? We, yeah, we looked at probably close to 10 houses. That's probably about average. Yeah. And we we put offers on, I think, three of them. Okay. And there was a few that they told us beforehand had cash offers. And and we, we bought in spring, a year ago. So yeah. Tough time. Spring of 22. So, and, and yeah. I th what, how would you say it's changed since then? Um, a year ago, I don't know that it's changed a whole was it, lot. It may is it still have, as competitive as it it's, was. Depending on the price range, okay. um, we've got some properties in under three hundred. They're going to go quickly. Yeah, um, in Johnson City, at under three hundred, it's just like but, that's what we were looking for. Yeah. Was that price range? Yeah, and so um, just trying to, um, yeah, trying to find houses for our buyers at that price point is just difficult. Mm -hmm. um, as you go up, it slows down a little bit. Yeah. Um, Interest rates going up have slowed things down. I think you guys probably bought before the interest rates went up, which was a good move. What's it at right now? I think today you're around six and a half, six and a okay. quarter. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping they come down a little bit mm -hmm. um, this 
summer, but we'll see. It just depends on the economy and inflation and all right. kinds of factors that the Fed looks at. Yeah. Yeah. Do the do the prices and the interest rates do they normally fluctuate to kind of teeter totter a little bit? A little bit. Um if the interest rates go up, do the prices typically go down, go down, a, down little a little bit. bit? A little. Yeah. Now not a whole lot. Not dramatically. Yeah, not but, dramatically, yeah. right. But, but enough it, to kind of offset it, the, the... A little bit, but what it does is it um, changes the pool of buyers, right? So if you're looking for a 600 house, now you're in the 500 range for the same yeah. payment. You know, right. Or 450, you know, something like that, which is a different tier, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, that kind of narrows the field. It, uh, at that 600 point, you know, yeah. there, there's a smaller pool. And so that's why it slows it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And with that, depending on the demand um, or the motivation of that seller at 600, they may say, well, we'll just sell it at 550 because we've got to go. We've got to get to Utah, start a new job, you yeah. know, whatever. I've right. got a new podcast gig. Again, pitch. it depends on the urgency like you were talking about. It does, yeah, buy, yeah, seller urgency has a lot to do with it. Um, but again, the market really um, – really dictates it and mm -hmm. it's still super busy right now in johnson city and the surrounding areas we have a lot of people looking for houses looking to move here right um even in the top tier ranges you know around a million there's a bunch of people looking to so wow. um, a lot of people want that storybook you know five acres beautiful house on the hill mm -hmm. that kind of thing um and so yeah they're, i'm seeing more of them show up um, looking for that and seeing a few of them come on the market and they're moving fairly quickly, even at the million, million two range, which historically that's, around that's here crazy, is, yeah. yeah, you know, it's a different deal and a, a different mindset too. Like, well, those are all going to be custom homes, aren't they? A lot of times the most they part. are. Yeah. I mean, somebody built it. Yeah. You don't build too many spec like houses. Five that, acre lot or something like that with a nice house on it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a custom house most of the time. Yeah. I don't think Joanna. It's not really. Joanna Gaines really build a, a bunch of those as spec homes, but yeah, you know, she yeah. knows she's going to sell them. <laughs> but it'll be a yeah, yeah, right. That's cool. Yeah. So let's say we figure out. Okay, we we've figured out a price for your house, right? Mm -hmm. And so the next steps to get your house on the market, we don't just slap a sign in the yard. Yeah. We one if you we have a stager Nicole Teal with Texture Home Staging is our stager friend and. Mm -hmm. Um, she can come in and consult you with us. We give you a couple hours of her consultation. So she'll come in and say, hey, let's move the couch over here. Or here is a paint color that would be great in this room. And let's declutter this. And let's clean off all the kitchen cabinets or yep. countertops. And let's add some plants here and there. And let's make it look really open and bright and airy and smell good and feel good and do mm -hmm. all that stuff. And so, yeah, if your house smells like cat pee, she'll tell you, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so those are the things that um, we want to knock out first. And then... We, um, when you say, Hey, I think we've got it ready. We've done what Nicole did. I'll put down new flooring. We painted, we're ready to roll. We're ready for the photographer. So we hire a professional photographer mm -hmm. every time. Um, you'll see a lot of, a lot of houses out there that are on the market and it looks like the pictures were taken with somebody's an old, Android, an Android or a flip phone, maybe <laughs> out the phone. car window or something, <laughs> just driving by a Motorola razor, Motorola razor. Yes. That was such a sweet phone. <laughs> Did that you was, ever have one that of those? was a cool phone. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did too. Those were that's probably like your first phone. You're so young. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh one of the first. Yeah. My first phone went uh -huh. rotary on the, the, rotary. On the wall. On the wall phone. <laughs> yeah. You probably don't even remember that. Um and so uh yeah, then the photographer comes out, we they take beautiful pictures of it, mm -hmm. and then we we talk to you about, hey, what are, you know, when I'm interviewing you for your house, I'm like, what are the favorite things about the house, too? Because we want to write a good description. Tammy, um, in my office, she inputs all the listings. Mm -hmm. She writes up a great description from what you think is awesome about your house. Man, we love sitting on the front porch, drinking coffee, watching the sun come up over the mountains, you right. know. Because, oddly, it's an emotional buy. Like, mm -hmm. You're buying, I mean, this is the biggest purchase or biggest, one of the biggest things sale you'll ever sell. It's the biggest thing you'll ever sell. And it's emotional. And so mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I want to sit on the front porch, you know. You spend a lot of time in, in your house. So you a lot do. of memories are made, a lot of, you know, a lot of. Kids sometimes yeah, are made. Kids, <laughs> a lot of kids are made every now and then. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, you've got a place where families get together, friends yep. come over, we're having dinners, we're watching movies. It's mm -hmm. a safe place. It's my, it's my, you know, 
cocoon area. You know, I go home and want to get away from the world and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And so, um, it's special. And so it's an emotional buy for a, a buyer. And so we want to make it feel as good as possible so that they can make that emotional connection with your house. Yep. Yep. And so sometimes that may even mean like, Hey Mitch, you can't be around when the buyers are here. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're a really nice guy <laughs> and you probably would do a good job selling it, but there are some people that aren't the nicest. And so it's better for them to walk the dog, drive off somewhere. And actually I feel yeah. like everybody feels more comfortable looking at a house without the seller there. So I, yeah. just cause you can be, you know, free to look in the closets and check out the attic and talk about it. Um, <laughs> as freely as possible but now everybody's on camera too so you kind of got to yeah be careful there as well <laughs> um, i'm trying to coach my people like hey let's not say too much in the house you know um yeah because it's a negotiation as well it is yeah yeah we had one guy we went and looked at the house in Irwin, and uh the, the uh, homeowner was there when we went and looked at it and it was almost like having a car salesman follow you around to right. each room and mm-hmm. kind of upsell everything mm-hmm yeah. It was informative, but it was also annoying. Right. Like in a way. Yeah. I have real shag carpet in that. You can't you can't really be honest. True. With, yeah. Like you might not like a shag carpet or mm-hmm. Oh, that's neat. Mm, yes. And look at this color green appliances that mm-hmm. I have. You can't find that anymore. No. There's a reason for that. You know, stuff There's like that. Reason right. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't say that to their face. You can't say that to their face. So I would encourage you to you and marissa to just go on a walk go on a date Mm -hmm. while people are looking at your house right maybe if depending on the price point you may even want to go on vacation for the weekend Mm -hmm. because it's going to be nuts and we may even do an open house and um nowadays yeah i mean it's hard like if you guys were looking for a house and sometimes i'm having to double book showings and that kind of thing and Mm -hmm. i mean running into people when we're looking at houses because it's just it's mayhem. People yeah. are out there. We got a scrap for this house and I'm fighting for you to get the house and other agents are going to be fighting for their, you know, people to buy your house. Mm-hmm. And so it's, um, it's a little crazy. So we, uh, let the photographer do what the photographer does and makes the house look awesome. We get those photos back. We get the description written up. We do all the measurements. We've got the house, you know, just the way we want it. We put it out on MLS and it goes to about probably, probably through, MLS, I'm going to tell you, it hits like five or six different sites that are big. You know, Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it hits all the agents first, so it hits our our site, the MLS system first. So we'll we'll see it within seconds, and um, and then we put it out through our Keller Williams listing service. Since we're the biggest company in the world now, it hits like 400 other sites. And okay. So anybody in the world looking for your house in Elizabeth is going to be able to find it. It's yeah. Going to, they're going to see it, and it's going to look awesome because we've done everything on the front end right. to get it ready to roll. And then um, then we start showing it, and we get offers, hopefully, within the next, you know, the first couple of days. I'd say we get a couple, three offers. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, I'll say, hey, you know, we've got these three offers. Um, we've got some other people lined up to see it tomorrow. You have some options. You can um, You can take one of these offers. And counter it or accept it. Mm-hmm. So you, you get it under contract like that, you know. Um, we could go back and say, hey, everybody, um, we've got multiple offers. And this mm-hmm. is what I prefer to do. I think it's more fair. Um, we got multiple offers on the, um, the McGeary's house. And um, by, let's say, Monday at noon, we're going to take the highest and best offer. Yep. And so that gives the people for, you know, that looked on it Saturday and Sunday and even Monday morning, they could even get in and, and get an offer in. Mm-hmm. And so it gives a, it gives a levels of playing field. And it tells the other three people, all three people that, Hey, we've got multiple offers in. So mm-hmm. we gotta, we gotta put our best foot forward and, you know, we gotta make the best offer we can to get this house, you know? Right. And I tell people to make an offer that makes sense in your heart and you can feel good about not getting it. You yeah. know, like, and I know you said you guys had some multiple offer situations. And so, mm-hmm. It doesn't feel good to lose, though, right? No, but the but like you said, don't don't offer too much that it's out of yeah that that it would be too much out to, of your comfort zone, handle, yeah, yeah and, or stretching just your to be, budget just to be competitive, just to be competitive, yeah. right? And some people can get in that game, and I think that's where an agent as well says, "Hey, you know, there's going to be another house coming up. Let's just 
let's maybe not. And some people don't like the multiple offer situation. They just go, yeah, we don't want to get in a bidding war. We're backing out. So that right. leaves you with two or maybe even one offer. Somebody, you know, two of them may back out. Mm-hmm. But then you may get a couple more the next day. And so um, then we sit down with the offers and we look at all the terms. We go, okay, this guy is paying 100% cash and he doesn't need to sell a house and, you know, it's ready to roll. And he wants to close whenever we want to close, you mm-hmm. know. And um, there are different things you can do. Um, to make your offer look better and we can talk about that offline if you want to contact me but um so we'll decide okay well this one's got financing maybe and you know they're not or maybe this one's not putting anything down and you know there's just certain things that um make the offers look better or not you know the cash guy says i don't want to um maybe he wants to do inspections and he's getting an appraisal or something you know Mm -hmm. and then there's another guy who's getting financing, but they've waived the appraisal. They've waived the inspections. So, you know, and they're pre-approved. So, you know, that one's going to go through. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, Hey, well, that seems good to us. Let's do that one. And so they, you know, so at that point we, we take an offer and we could even take one of the other guys and say, Hey, you want to be a backup? And she says, sure, we'll, we'll be in the backup position. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then you've got two contracts on your house sort of. And Mm -hmm. so, um, that makes you feel really good about moving, you know, to Johnson City. So then we can go look at houses in Johnson City contingent on your house selling. Right. Which is kind of fun and uh, puts you in a better spot. Yeah. Yeah. And then we start all the process of selling your house. So they're going to, you know, we got to get an inspection done typically. And in this situation, probably not. But, you know, most of the times people are going to get the house inspected. So Mm -hmm. we deal with repairs on that end. And that's where I feel like I thrive. I like to get in the middle of the negotiation part. I think that's where I'm like yeah, in my strength zone. And figuring out problems, you know, somebody's right. like, oh, the back corner of that house is going to, you know, fall apart or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, really, is it, you know, I don't know. Let's get a structural engineer out there. He says, oh, it's just a brick crack. You know, it's not a, it's not a structural issue. Mm-hmm. The foundation's solid. You're, it's more of a cosmetic deal. Yep. Okay. We're, the buyers feel good. We feel good. Maybe we hire a, um, a mason to come in, repoint the brick, maybe mm-hmm. even put, replace a brick or two to make it look solid again for them just yeah. to take care of that issue. Whereas the deal would have fallen apart, you wouldn't have sold your house. We'd have to put it back on the market right. and fix the corner. If you hadn't double-checked on that. If we hadn't double-checked on that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, or electrical, or plumbing, or roof stuff, or flooring, windows. I mean, there's just people, you know, the home inspectors go through the house for hours. Yeah. Radon, that's a big one. Um, mm-hmm. Termites, you know. So there's all kinds of things that people inspect for. Septic systems, Um yeah, easements. You can all kinds of stuff, and then so uh, we get through the inspection part of it. We work it out, and um, then it's up to basically the lender. Mm-hmm. We're waiting on the appraisal to come in. The buyers are getting every document in the world, like we talked about when you were buying a house, yep. um, to the bank. So they're doing all that stuff on their side of it. We're staying on top of that on our listing side, making sure that they're diligently moving forward because we don't want them to show up at closing and go, "Oh, we forgot to apply for a loan." You right. Know? That throws you out another month, and then you lose your house in Johnson City, and you don't like me at that point. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, and then so we go to closing. We do title work. We have, you know, send a contract to a um, title attorney or title closing office, and they do all the title research and make sure that it's clear. Mm-hmm. There's not some long-lost person that's going to come up and buy it, you know, say, that's my house. And um, that's why I tell people to buy title insurance just in case that does happen. But at that point, we go to closing, and we close, and you get a check, mm-hmm. and you're you're out the door. Mm-hmm. Of course, you've got to move. You've got to pack yes. up all your stuff, mm-hmm. which isn't very fun. But unless you've been able to do what was the what was the loan you said the bridge bridge loan? loan. Yep. yep. If we did a bridge loan, or what you could have done is another thing too is we have a house in Johnson City that's under contract, contingent on this other house selling your house in Elizabeth and selling. Uh-huh. So we go to that other agent. They're out of that house. It's vacant. They've, you know, they moved on um, a while ago. And I go, Hey, uh, Mike, can we let Mar- Marissa and um, Mitch move their stuff in a couple of days before closing mm-hmm. so that you don't have to put it in storage or hold it in a truck or do some stuff like that that yep. makes life a little more chaotic. And, um, so we work out a pre-occupancy prior to closing agreement mm-hmm. that says, yes, we'll let you move it in. We're going to charge you $100 a day or $0 a day. It doesn't, I mean, we just work it out. And, right. Um, but you guys at that point need to have insurance on the house, and you're taking responsibility for the for the house. Kind it's of, your you know. property, basically. Basically, Treat you're it like accepting it is. responsibility for the property. Yeah. 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 Treat it like it's yours. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
And then you move all your stuff in there and you're good to go. Cool. Yeah. And, and hopefully you're super excited. Yes. Even though it's been a ton of work. <laughs> yeah. It is a lot of work. But the thing is a lot of work. That's the worst part of my job because I'm like, hey, we sold your house. And then like, guess what? You got to move all your stuff out. And yeah. you're like, really, Colin? You know, like we knew it, but then you get into it and you didn't know what you didn't know because you got a lot of stuff. And you, yeah, you don't realize how much stuff you have till you have to move. Probably hard to move nine chairs. There's always that one room or closet in the house that's full of stuff that you've forgotten about. Mm-hmm. Or it, you know it's there and you, you just know kinda, it's yeah, it's in the back of your mind. Yeah. But yeah, you don't realize how much stuff is actually in there. Right. Like what should I do with this? Move. We'll just stick it down in the basement. Yeah. No big deal. Put it in the attic, basement. Yeah. Garage. Yes. Yeah. Don't do that, people. Go to your basement right now. If you haven't used it in a year or two, go give it away. Yeah. Good Samaritan, <laughs> right? I can almost see it from here. There's they would love to take it, it and they would sell it or go, donate it to somebody who really could use it. And mm-hmm. It's just taking up space in your basement and taking up emotional space in your life. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff in my basement. That's, I got a lot of skeletons down there. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to donate them, but the, the good they thing is they, didn't want any, they don't want any skeletons. So. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically in a nutshell how to sell a house. Yeah. And what we do at the Colin and Carly Group to help you do that. Mm-hmm. Any other any questions about that process or any ideas that we didn't cover? No, I I think you covered everything. Maybe do another recap. I think a little recap. Yeah, that really helped kind of narrow it down. Okay, so how to sell a house in like a, under a minute? Yeah. Okay. Just the step by step. Step by step is call me number one. <laughs> <laughs> Call me number one. I come look at your house. We do some market research. We talk about pricing for your house. We talk about condition, things you could do to improve it. Um, While you're improving your house, I'm doing research, finding the best price. The other thing is timing too. Like if you're not going to sell it in this, you know, in a week or two, I'm going to say, let's hold off and price it in a little while because we want, we're in a competition with other houses. So we need to see how we compete. So there might be four houses just like yours on the market later on. So we get, Pricing figured out. We um, oh, there's a lot of a lot of paperwork we didn't talk about, but you sign all that listing disclosures. There's all kinds of fun things that you'll mm-hmm. sign and go through, and our team's great about walking you through that. And it's good too because it protects you and the buyer, and um, but it really protects you on disclosing things, and so you don't get sued later down the re- down the road. And so um, yeah, then we put a photographer out there to take pictures after you got it looking great. Um, we write up an awesome description. We put a sign in the yard, we do a little video about it, put a lockbox on the house, you give me a spare key, and we're off and running. We're showing the house. Somebody's, you know, buyers are coming in and out with agents, and, and then we get offers, and we work it out, and we get it under contract. And then mm-hmm. we walk through the contract part of it, and then we go to closing. And at closing, you're homeless. You're homeless. So how to make Mitch homeless in under a minute. There mm-hmm. you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we get to help you find a new house. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just that easy. And we would love to help you do it. I love helping people sell houses. It's that's, so that's much awesome. fun. It is so much fun, Mitch. Like, call Colin. Call me. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I think you brought up a lot of really, really valuable things that you do. Like one of the things you mentioned was the uh, negotiating when you get into the I love the inspection stage. Mm-hmm. I think yep. that's a that's a common. And during the you know they offer let's say it's you know three fifty and. They offer you three hundred, yeah. you know, and so let's let's negotiate on that. How do we? It's that's kind of a scary territory for some people. It's a pretty big deal. You don't really know what you don't know. You don't know. That's what a lot you don't of, know. A lot of and that. Um, having sold over a thousand houses, we're pretty good at negotiating. Mm-hmm. And so, my goal is to get you as much as we can, right? And so, yeah, um, yeah we. I want to work hard to make sure you don't. And so, you know, a lot of people try and bracket or let's split the difference. And I'm like, let's not split the difference. You know, <laughs> let's try and get you as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good news is in this market, you're getting a lot for your house. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's slowing down a little bit. And it'll, um, I think if we have uh, economic, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, it's, it may slow it down a little bit more. And then yeah. at that point, you're really working for every dollar, you know, mm-hmm. and um, people are like, oh, but the commission. And I'm like, yeah, but we get you more typically than, I mean, 95% of the studies show that an agent's going to get you more for your house and selling it on your own. Mm-hmm. And there are a million things to deal with. 
you yeah. know, in the, in the process. And so, um, and I don't make a penny until your house sells. So it's like, you know, I tell people we're going into business together. Right. Um, you've got a, you've got the product and I'm the marketing and sales guy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, yeah, the commission doesn't really come into play because, right. Yeah. And all the other houses out there that you're looking at buying has commission in it for the buyer, you know, already in it. And, you know, so it's, it's kind of a wash. Yeah. Um, I, I would say from, you know, having just bought a house a year ago, very, very worth your time to hire a realtor that yeah. knows what they're doing. So Right. Well, and that allows you to do what you're doing, you know. Yeah, it takes out. a lot of that extra stuff off your plate that you uh-huh. don't have to think about. Yes. A lot of it's like sign this, sign this. They kind of give you a brief summary of mm-hmm. what it is so you right. understand it. And then yep. you don't yep. have to read it. Or when the issues come up, we – you're not researching for hours on how to fix yeah. that problem or deal yep. with that situation. And we've done it a bunch. So we know exactly who to call. They know us already. So yep. it's not like a random call. They're like, Oh yeah, we worked with those guys. Someone you trust. And, yeah. 20 yeah. times last year on septic systems. Right. Um, shout out to Mr. Hill. He's going to come out and check out your septic system and mm-hmm. make sure it's good and tell you if it's not and you know what we need to do. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, having those resources I think are invaluable. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. Call Colin. Call me <laughs> to sell your house. And, and we would love okay. to help you. Well, Mitch, thank you for being my guest on the podcast today. I enjoyed pretending to sell your house and hopefully educating our listeners on how to do that. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to people connecting with us in, in the spring and summer and fall to sell their houses. And even the winter, the winter is one of the great times to sell a house too, because there's less competition out there. And so, um, Yes, if you want to sell your house or buy a house or invest in real estate and create wealth, I'm Colin Johnson, and I would love to help you do that. And we even property manage uh, lots of property, and we would love to help you with that as well. So, um, yeah, just reach out. You've got my number in the show notes. You can um, email me, text me, call me, come by and see me, Instagram me, um, come to the podcast, jump on here. We can connect. I love meeting new people, and I look forward to helping you. I hope you have a great spring fighting off the allergies.